Hey, welcome back to Let's Play Stray Gods. And it's probably a little bit later than it should be for me, but I'm going to go talk to Persephone and do one more video. Apologize, maybe. Back again so soon, Grace? <laughs> You're practically a regular at the club. Did you end up finding Medusa? Or did she vanish the moment you came near like she does with every other idol? She definitely did not vanish. Maybe I'd better explain what happened. Explains, explains, explains. I knew it. We never should have brought that monster to the new world. Athena is a fool to think Medusa can be controlled. You're fortunate to have made it out in one piece. It could have gone very poorly for you. Uh, for me. You're right. I should have brought you to protect little old defenseless me. Ah, If I'd gone, you would have found nothing more than an empty building, I assure you. Because you're so big and scary. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you appreciate my finer qualities. <laughs> At any rate, Medusa might be in the clear. Pan, however, is not. I don't imagine you've confronted him yet. He admitted to selling out Calliope, but not to killing her. I don't know if I can believe him. Nor I. Pan would do anything to save his own skin. Allow me some time to consider our next move. On a different matter, I've had time to do some thinking. After Aphrodite's party, we never really spoke about the Eidolon and Calliope's memories. No doubt, you have many questions. Apollo told me a little about it. He did say I should talk to you, though. Did he now? <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to ask? When all these memories start to return, will I feel different? First, you'll have dreams. Places you've never been, people you've never met. But unlike with normal dreams, these will linger. Then they will come while you're awake. Sudden flashes or, or snippets of deja vu. And sometimes it will seem so real you'll swear you're hallucinating. If there's anything difficult about the process is that it becomes hard to differentiate between your life and all these other lives you're now recalling. That does sound confusing. Confusing and often unpleasant, as not all the memories will be fond ones. But that will pass in time. You said it becomes hard to differentiate your life from the others. How hard, exactly? It'll still be me, right? Oh, how do I explain this? Grace, would you say that you are who you are because of your experiences? The things you've lived and done? I guess so, sure. Well, all the things Calliope has done, and those before her, will now be yours. They will feel like a part of your life as well. Thus, they can't help but shape you. The grace that is now will be and will have done so much more. Fortunately, you don't have to deal with every memory. Each time the Eidolon passes on, the oldest memories fade. And that helps. Ah. <sighs> Wait, how is it good that old memories start to fade? Think of how old we are, Grace. If all those memories returned to you with perfect clarity, they would destroy you. Yeah, but doesn't that mean you've all forgotten so much? Well, far more than we remember. The further I think back, the more it becomes a bit of a blur, actually. You'll recall important moments. Some will be mixed up with the stories mortals tell, and you won't be sure which is the memory and which is the story. An idol's memory is a series of islands in a dark ocean, and they become smaller and smaller as they recede into the horizon. It sounds dire, but you become accustomed to it. It just takes time, and now you have all the time in the world. How many times have you died? Can I ask that? We call it passing on. <laughs> I've lost track of just how many times I've passed on my idol on. A dozen? It's happened less often in more recent eras. And the one you told me about, the woman married to that gangster? She was the most recent? I don't think of chastity as a she. That was me, just as the one my husband blasted with a shotgun was also me. It was one of the few times I wasn't able to prepare my successor. We were friends, yes, but I didn't know what Persephone was. 
and I had no idea what I'd just become. That must have been difficult. It was more difficult taking over my dead husband's territory. Women weren't often mobsters in those days. You really... Were you really a gangster? I've heard it said, but it sounds... Let me put it this way. I felt as if I'd been blessed by a dying woman who saved me from a prison of my own making. I didn't know what I was, but I was free. I felt more alive than I'd ever felt before and strong enough to toss an ox ten feet. Did I set out to become a mobster? <laughs> Not exactly. My husband's friends thought I'd murdered him, however, so they came after me. And one thing led to another. Oh, I see. Athena found me just as my memories were starting to return. I wasn't permitted to continue doing something so noticeable, so I was carted off to Olympus. It's too bad, really. I was an excellent mobster. Did I catch that? Let me see if I caught that. I appear to have not caught that. Uh... Nope, I did not catch the line. I just caught the portrait. Wait, you said that Persephone passed on her Eidolon as she lay dying. What if she had just died? The Eidolon will keep us alive for a time, even in the most horrific circumstances, in hopes that there is someone to pass it on to. What if there isn't? What if Chastity had died before you were shot? And then the line of Persephone would have ended then and there. Oh, there are some stories that say an Eidolon will go wandering, that it never really dies. And who knows if there's any truth to that. It's not exactly something we've had the opportunity to study. All we know is that many idols have left us forever. They've died, and that's how it happens. It's a lot to consider. Assuming I'll even have time to worry about it, what with the trial coming. Either the trial will end poorly, in which case all of this is moot, or it will end well, and you will have plenty of time to digest. Yeah, thanks for the update. I'm a realist, Grace. It's what I'm best at. Now then, unless you've something else to ask? Uh, tell me... let's well, not. Tell me more about Calliope. You and her were good friends, right? We were. And? And if you had told me a decade ago that I would become close to one of the muses, I would have laughed in your face. I always considered them Apollo's creatures. Calliope, Cleo, and Talia. Vapid, frivolous gods who handed off their idol on to any artist who took their fancy. Every time I met one of them, they were someone else. Apollo called them the sisters of beauty, no matter their gender. Can you imagine that? That's such a stupid name. I never thought of that. Do idols change gender a lot? Well, we tend to seek out successors like ourselves, but it happens. With the muses, it happened frequently. Everywhere Apollo went, they surrounded him like a gaggle of ducklings. Just like him to gather his own fans. If you disliked the muses so much, how did you end up becoming friends with Calliope? Well, she sought me out. She'd become more and more unhappy on Olympus, so she decided to leave just as I had, long before. Calliope asked for my help, and... I laughed in her face. Go ask one of your sycophant mortals, I told her. I mean, surely one of them has some threadbare couch you can sleep on. Wow. Typically, she was undeterred. She didn't just want a place to stay. She said she wanted to learn how to be truly independent from an idol who had mastered it. Hmm? <laughs> what can I say? I mean... I am a sucker for a well-timed compliment. I took her in. Apollo was furious. He and Calliope were barely speaking, but he was certain she'd come crawling back to Olympus. Oh, I made taking her in all the sweeter. After you took Calliope in, that's when you became friends? Well, no, not right away. I wasn't looking for a friend. What I was looking for was an opening act in the club. Calliope entertained here for years and then eventually turned from performing to attracting new acts. She was in her element. <sighs> she and I, uh, well, we warmed up to each other eventually. 
She was more capable than I expected, and I adored her furious rants. <laughs> Calliope didn't seem like the furious type when I met her. That's hard to picture. Oh, then you didn't really meet her. She was an idealist, and nobody could ever quite live up to her standards for very long. Her brothers and sisters, least of all. The idols needed to change, she said. They were withering away in the shadows, diminished and, and unwilling to save their own skins. When I joined the chorus, she expected me to change everything, as if I could single-handedly override Athena. I was to be her champion. And together we would bring revolution to the idols. Well, I was yet another disappointment. She left the club, but I gave her a place to live. We were supposed to stay in touch, but you know how it went from there. What happened to the other muses? You mentioned two others. Were they lost in the war? One of them was, though not like you think. The day we were to leave on the ship, Talia simply never showed up. Do you know what happened to her? We never heard from her again. Apollo thrashed about in mourning, but Talia had been fading away for years. It wasn't a surprise to the rest of us. What about the other muse? Cleo? Died long before. A victim at the hands of a mortal man, when she no longer possessed the power to bedazzle him. As I understand it, he kept her in a cage as a pet until her Eidolon shriveled up and perished. And it was dead before she was. Ugh, that's pretty dark. Yes, well, we come by our wariness of mortals honestly, Grace. I'd like to know a little more about the Idols. I am one now, right? <sighs> what constitutes a little more in this instance? Well, what are we? Where did we come from? If an idol is a soul that moves from person to person, it must have started somewhere, right? Ah, the big question. To which the answer is, nobody knows. I remember the original Persephone only vaguely. Indeed, I'm not even certain she was the original. Was there something before her? How did she get her idol on? I couldn't tell you. Evidently, we wrote little down in those early days, or were forbidden to, and our memories only stretch back so far. Anything beyond that simply isn't. Psst. Isn't it strange to not know where you come from? For all you know, the idols could be aliens. Aliens? Grace, you watch too many movies. Gods are okay, but aliens are just <laughs> wacky fiction. Fine, yes. It is strange. Our earliest days aren't the only blanks in our memories, however. We have many. And the last was the day Zeus called us all together to tell us Rome had fallen and we should prepare for war. <laughs> but did that war occur? Mm, I couldn't tell you. The last thing I remember after Rome was a thousand years later, in the 16th century. I was in a different body, feeling as if no time at all had passed. Athena calls that period the gap. That's what it feels like. All of us experienced it, and not one of us knows why or how. They did wander around. The gap, you mentioned. What was that like? Did you just wake up one day, or... I wasn't asleep. I lived. I had lives. I, I passed on my Eidolon. I may have known who I was and what I was, but perhaps I was completely unaware. All I know is that one day, Athena came to my nunnery. Near Trieste, I think. The moment that I saw her, all the old memories came flooding back. My life during the gap was wiped away in an instant, and it never returned. If someone did that to us, they were powerful indeed. What about Athena? I mean, she's the one who found you, right? She must have been aware. Athena woke up on her own, or so she claims, and spent the next century rounding up those idols who remained. Zeus, however, was gone. What became of him, what happened in Rome, we've never pieced it together. 
It's troubling. Tell me more about the war. It seems to have had a huge effect on all of you. That's putting it mildly. From Aphrodite's song, I know Ares betrayed everyone. What did you do? Honestly, after my mother was murdered, I barely remember. Your mother? Her name was Demeter. Not truly my mother, but an idol who had... had always cared for me since the early days. I thought we'd be together forever. And Ares brought those filthy bastards down on us. Demeter was slain by bullets. By bullets. Until that day, I believed we were untouchable. I'm so sorry. It must have been hard to lose her like that. I watched her fall. Heard her scream. I would have run to her, but I was pulled away to safety. By Hermes, I think. Or whatever was left of the old Persephone. The innocent girl with the long hair who loved her gardens. She died with Demeter that day. After that, I don't know. We went from hiding place to hiding place. I didn't even know what Hephaestus had done for us when I found myself on a boat. We might have been gods once, but after the war, we were just refugees, like so many others, fleeing to a distant land. Was it hard for the idols to come to the new world? It's just a place like any other, isn't it? Well, it wasn't the place that was hard, it was the fear. We knew we were vulnerable. We knew mortals could and would kill us. Suddenly, there were rules, you know? We had to be secret, we had to stay close together. We huddled in the shadows and quaked each time the mortals so much as breathed in our direction. We couldn't all live that way. Some of us drifted away, faded into the night without so much as an explanation. That's what's been the hard part. Our inevitable decline in a place where we don't belong. We can pass on our Eidolons as often as we like, but it will never truly be home. Are you willing to talk about Hades? If you don't want to, that's fine. I'm just... Incredibly curious how I ended up murdering my husband. <sighs> that, yeah. You know, one might think that my hatred of Hades began when he kidnapped me and forced me to be his bride. Hmm? But honestly, that wasn't it. I hated my brothers and sisters for letting it happen. But Hades himself terrified me. He had a presence. I mean, one that forever made him the most important man in the room. And me? Oh, I was nothing in comparison. When Hades began doting on me, trying to earn my favor, I swooned that he might deign to think of me that way. For centuries, I actually thought I was in love, that the kidnapping was the best thing that ever happened to me. It's funny how our perspectives change. If you got along with Hades for so long, what changed? I did. I grew up. I was a trophy for Hades. A conquest that he expected to remain meek and unchanging forever. He went out of his way to keep me small. I slowly realized that, you know, he'd always been that way. Manipulation and arrogance behind the handsome sneer battled for centuries. I hated him, and I told him so, but he refused to part with me. He declared that I was his and would stay in the underworld where I belonged. And that's when you killed him? That's when I killed him, yes. The first time one idol had ever murdered another. Thank you very much. 
I'm guessing the other idols weren't thrilled with you killing Hades. <laughs> well, yeah, they didn't know what to do with me. And Athena was furious that the most powerful remaining idol had been lost. You see, this was before the war and before all the new rules. The chorus had, had never once contemplated execution, but they certainly considered it then. In the end, they decided it was better to humiliate me. They ensured I did not benefit from Hades' murder and stripped the throne I had wrested from his grasp. Which you weren't happy about. I asked them where they were all those years while I pleaded for help. I was held captive, and what was I expected to do? What, what, lie down and take it forever because Hades was more useful to them alive? No. I stopped doing what was expected of me the day I slit his throat. May he rot in Tartarus with the Titans for all eternity. How did you go from ruling the underworld to opening a nightclub named after it? I won it in a bet with Dionysus, god of merriment. Okay, there has to be a story there. <laughs> well, the story is that he was a fool, but a charming one with many patrons. They built him a nightclub as his personal playground. And it was a grand old time for Dionysus in the 1970s, I assure you. But uh, he, he didn't know how to run a business. By the time Disco was ready to die, so was his stupid club. So I offered to make it profitable. If I succeeded, he would turn ownership over to me. He accepted because, frankly, all he wanted to do was drink anyhow. I was successful. The club became mine, and I kicked Dionysus out for never paying his tab. <sighs> Sucks to be him. If Dionysus ever sobers up, he might decide to be sore about it, but <laughs> so far, that hasn't happened. What's the deal between you and Apollo? The way you two fight? I've told you how he and the other idols stood by and let me rot with Hades, did I not? It seems more personal than that. <sighs> Okay, there's an old saying that no one escapes the underworld. But that's not true. I did. Once. Not long after Hades kidnapped me. I was homesick. And I missed my mother. Caron took pity on me and allowed me across the sticks. And after that, Grace, I waded through darkness itself to get out of there. Hades chased after me relentlessly, but I evaded him, right up until I got to the very slopes of Olympus, and who do you suppose was the first idol I met? Uh oh. oh. Apollo stood there. I cried out to him, begging him not to let Hades take me, and yet Apollo did, as he has always done. Absolutely nothing. Hades was thrilled. And I knew then and there I could never rely on my so-called family for anything, ever again. That's all I can think of for now. I'll see you around? Oh, yes. That's where I'll be. Around. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to let it off. We have two more days. Um... So, we know she went to the reliquary, something set off the alarm, she was attacked there. Athena has a spear. Pan's worried that he might be blamed, he wanted to see if there was anything that may have caused him... Uh, that he did that may have caused Calliope's death. Hmm. Anyway, we'll see what goes from here. Talk to you then. Bye.